days, carved out of the earth three quarters of a century earlier by her husband's eccentric great grandfather. Thousands of champagne bottles rested on their sides there, a small fortune of bubbles waiting for their next act. Inés? Michelle's concerned voice wafted from somewhere deep within the cellars, and then she could hear footsteps coming closer until he rounded the corner ahead of her, followed by Théo Laurent, the Maison Chauveau's chef de cave, the head winemaker. My dear, what is it? Michel asked as he rushed to her, putting his hands on her shoulders and studying her face. Are you quite all right, Inés? No. She hadn't realized until then how breathless she was from the news, and the drive, and the rapid descent into the chill of the cellars. No, Michel, I'm not all right at all. What happened? Michel asked, while Theo regarded her silently, his expression as impassive as always. It has begun, Ines managed to say. The invasion, Michel. The Germans are coming. A heavy silence hung in the damp air. How long would it be before the quiet of the cellars was punctured by the thud of goose-stepping boots overhead? Before everything they'd built was threatened, perhaps destroyed? Well then... Michel said at last. I suppose it is time we finish hiding the champagne. Two. June 2019. Liv. Liv Kent's left hand was naked. Or that's how it felt anyhow, each time she looked down and saw the empty space where her wedding ring had been for the past twelve years. And though she'd taken it off three months ago, five weeks after Eric had announced he was leaving and wanted the paperwork done as soon as possible, it still startled her sometimes, the absence of something she'd thought she would have forever. But then there were a lot of things she'd thought she could count on. Thanks for being cool about this, Eric said, as he carried the final cardboard box of their shared belongings into her small one-bedroom apartment, the one Liv had moved into after they'd separated. It felt strange to have him here, filling space that would never belong to him. Part of her wanted to scream at him to get out. But another piece of her, a piece she was utterly ashamed of, wanted to beg him to stay. The speed at which their marriage had disintegrated had left Liv feeling as if the ground had opened up beneath her. Cool? she repeated as he gazed around, taking in the apartment she'd filled with furniture they used to share. His eyes lingered on the distressed leather couch anchoring the room, and she wondered if he was thinking, as she suddenly was, of the day they'd bought it, the way they'd argued about the expense, the way they'd fallen onto its unforgiving cushions afterwards to make up, sweaty and tangled up in each other. Then again, maybe he was just thinking that he was glad to have a fresh start with none of the items they'd purchased together infringing on his new life. His eyes moved back to hers. I just mean, I know this hasn't been easy. He rearranged his features into a mask of somber sympathy, and Liv felt a spike of annoyance, which was better than the sadness that had been swirling through her like a storm since they'd officially signed their divorce papers that morning. I really am sorry about the way things turned out, Liv, but we just wanted different things. All Liv could manage was a non-committal, hmm, I do want what's best for you, you know that, right? I'll always care about you. Just not as much as you care about yourself, Liv couldn't resist, or your new girlfriend. Eric sighed, don't be angry, Liv. He set the cardboard box down on the floor and brushed his hands off. I'd like to think that someday we might even be friends. Liv snorted, and for a second, Eric's sympathetic look slipped, and his forehead creased in annoyance, giving Liv a glimpse of the man she now knew lurked beneath the carefully curated exterior, the one who blamed her for everything that had gone wrong between them. Liv had wanted to have a baby, to build a family, and Eric had been seemingly happy to try. But then, after more than a year of disappointments, she had been diagnosed with premature ovarian failure. They'd tried three rounds of in vitro using donor eggs before Eric had abruptly announced he was done.